Hey guys, my name is Matt Johnson, and this is my second video in the month of camera insanity for filmmakers. What is the month of camera insanity, you ask? Well, imagine two cameras being announced from Canon, the successor to the A7S II being announced from Sony, and two cameras being announced from Nikon as well, just to mix things up. July 2020 is insane. I started off yesterday by posting a video overview of the video specs of the Canon R5, an 8K shooting monster of a camera. And today I'm following it up with a camera that has seemingly come out of nowhere, but is arguably more exciting, the Canon R6. Today I want to share with you the full video specs of the R6 and tell you my initial thoughts about this camera. Also, if you're not caught up on the Canon R5 news, I will link to my video about that up in the corner and down in the video description. Moving on, let's talk about the Canon R6. For years now, nearly every wedding filmmaker I've talked to, myself included, have asked for a camera that does three simple things. Shoots 4K in 60 frames per second in full frame. We have begged nearly every camera manufacturer to make that happen. We asked Canon for it, and in 2016, they gave us the 1DX2, which recorded 4K, 60 frames per second, with a 1.3 times crop. We asked Sony for those things, and in 2015, they released the A7S II, which gave us 4K, full frame, but 30 frames per second. We asked again with the A7III, the A7R3, the A7R4, the A6300, the A6400, the A6500, the A6600. All of those cameras, Sony said, you don't need 4K60, 4K30 is plenty. I really hope this changes with the release of the successor to the A7S II later this month. Next, we asked Panasonic. And in 2019, we got the S1 and S1R. They gave us full frame. 60 frames per second with a 1.5 times crop on the S1 and a 1.1 times crop on the S1R. And you're thinking, Matt, 1.1 times, that's basically nothing. What's the big deal? Well, it was pixel binned and nobody wanted to touch that camera. Panasonic got one more chance with the S1H. It's made for filmmakers. It's approved by Netflix. 4K, 60 frames per second. 1.5 times crop. Why does it even have a fan in it if it can't do full frame? Finally, we're back to asking Canon. It's 2020. Nobody is holding up much hope for them, especially considering they just released the C300 Mark III last December, which does record full frame 4K60, but for $16,000. Out of seemingly nowhere, after giving us a 1.8 times crop on the EOS R and failing to include basics like 24 frames per second in a lot of their cameras until filmmakers rioted and they included it in a firmware update, you want 4K? No, here's 8K. 60 frames per second, no, that's not good enough for you. Here's 120, all in full frame. Who is this Canon and what have they done with the old Canon? I don't know what's going on here. My brain is breaking. I just, I don't know. Here's what I do know though. The R5 is too much camera for most filmmakers. Nobody was asking for it. It costs $3,900 too, a price that is a bit steep. So Canon was really smart. And I feel weird saying that considering this is the company that ushered in the DSLR filmmaking revolution. And whenever they were interviewed about it, they were like, well, I don't know. We thought journalists might want to record a few video clips. Didn't think filmmakers would care. Regardless, they were smart about this. Waiting in the wings, barely leaked until the last minute, Canon has made a second camera, a little sibling to the R5, the Canon R6. I would argue, once you see these specs, and especially once you see this price, the Canon R6 is exactly what filmmakers were asking for. What's that? I learned something new after recording the majority of this video. You're saying the R6 does have a crop. How much of a crop? No, I just did the whole intro of this video and I was saying how this camera gives filmmakers everything that they wanted. It doesn't do all three of those things. <sighs> okay, uh, the R6 does have a 1.07 times crop when recording in 4K. This camera is now a failure. I'm sorry that I wasted your time. But if you can get past the tiny crop, which I will definitely say is better than the 1.8 times crop on the EOS R, then you'll be happy to know that this camera's 4K image is oversampled from 5K. So it should look 
really crispy. You want 120 frames per second? That will be in 1080p HD, still 10-bit, still in full frame. With the R5, Canon went a little crazy and had to pair a CF Express card slot with a UHS-2 SD card slot because that 8K RAW video is quite beefy and too fast for regular SD cards. Because the R6 doesn't record 8K or any RAW video at all, it instead has two UHS-2 card slots, which should hopefully help you save a bit of money, considering SD cards are usually cheaper than CF Express. Not to mention, you will also be saving money because this camera won't be recording over a terabyte of video per hour in 8K RAW like the R5. You should know though, and this is where things get a little less great about the R6, that one of the main ways Ways Canon keeps the file sizes down for this camera is that it only records in the lower quality IPB video format in 4K. Not the all I format or RAW format like in the Canon R5. Recording IPB video results in a smaller file size, but the quality is not as good as all I and may result in lower quality if you're filming fast moving footage or using a green screen. Of course, I would wait to see real world footage examples before making a decision on whether the R6 is right for you. Now at this point, news is just starting to trickle out about how the R6 and the R5 handle overheating. And for the R5, how can I put this? It's not looking so good, especially considering that paid reviewers who live in cooler climates than say I do in Texas are already talking about how this camera overheats. Canon even admits in their official documentation that the R5 will overheat after approximately 20 minutes when recording in 8K and 25 minutes when recording in 4K 60. With the R6, there have not been any rumblings about overheating that I've heard yet. So I'm hoping that even in 4K 60, the R6 will be capable of recording for as long as you need it to without overheating. That said though, if neither of these cameras can film without overheating, it is going to be really hard for me to recommend them to filmmakers, especially wedding filmmakers that film long ceremonies. The R6, just like the R5, also shares in a 29 minute and 59 second recording time limit, regardless of the frame rate and resolution resolution you choose. I really hate this artificial limitation by Canon. Moving on, the R6, just like the R5, is the first Canon camera to be released that supports in-body image stabilization. With this camera being cheaper than the R5, I can see filmmakers with smaller budgets buying less expensive, non-image stabilized lenses from Canon and using them with the R6. I am so glad to see Canon enter the land of Ibis with Sony and Panasonic. What else do we got? Well, there are a few things that the R6 shares with the R5. First, Canon Log is built in, so dynamic range with this camera should be excellent. Canon's new Dual Pixel Autofocus 2 is here, and because this camera shares the same autofocus system as the R5, it should be excellent. The R6 also shares the same battery as the R5, the 5D Mark IV, and like, 10 other Canon cameras. You should not need to buy new batteries for this camera, unless you're like me and the last time you bought Canon batteries was 2009 and those batteries probably need to be retired by now. All right, wrapping up. As I said earlier, this camera is cheaper than the R5. How much cheaper? How does $1,400 cheaper sound? Yes, this camera retails for $2,500, which is highly competitive, so should you buy it? Like I said at the start of this video, the R6 is the camera that everyone has spent years asking for. It hits all the specs filmmakers have been begging for, and for $2,500, it's attainable for a good amount of people. If I had to choose, I think the R5 goes above and beyond what most filmmakers need and is great to rent for specialized jobs. On the other hand, the R6 is a workhorse that I think most filmmakers are going to love. As always, I would recommend waiting for real world reviews before you buy any camera. And in the case of the R6, as well as the R5, I would definitely wait to see real world reviews to see how these cameras handle overheating before you make a purchase. With that, thank you so much for watching. It would be a huge help to me if you would consider liking this video. As I said at the start too, this is the month of camera insanity, so it would be hugely appreciated if you would consider subscribing if you want to see more videos about these cameras in the future and maybe even some reviews of them. Also, if you happen to be a wedding filmmaker like me, you probably want to book more couples and film more weddings. To help you out with that, I've created a free PDF guide that's gonna give you practical steps that you can take right now in your business 
to book more couples and film more weddings. It's a free gift to you. You can download it at the link down in the video description. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.